overview. We will then present controls and indicators, system description, normal operations, and servicing. Fuel is stored in the number one and number two main tanks in the wings. Each main tank holds approximately 4,590 kilograms of fuel. In addition to the main tanks, there is a center tank. This tank holds approximately 7,080 kilograms of fuel for a total fuel capacity of 16,260 kilograms. Now, let's look at the controls and indicators. The fuel quantity indicators and test switch are located on the center instrument panel. Testing of the indicating system will be covered in normal operations. The fuel quantity indicators require standby AC power. A digital readout of each fuel tank quantity is displayed in kilograms. The total fuel in all tanks is displayed on the performance initialization page of the flight management computer. The other controls and indicators for the fuel system are located on the overhead panel. The upper part of the panel contains the engine fuel valve closed lights and the filter bypass lights. These lights will be covered in the power plant presentation. The fuel temperature indicator, the crossfeed valve selector, and valve open light are also located in this area. The fuel temperature indicator receives an input from a sensor in the number one main tank. The lower part of the fuel panel is arranged schematically with pump switches for each tank representing fuel pumps and flow lines representing fuel feed lines to the engines. Each pump has a low pressure light. Next, let's look at the system description. Each main tank contains a forward and aft fuel pump. Notice that the pumps in each tank are powered by different AC buses. Therefore, the loss of a single AC bus affects only one pump in each main tank. A pressure sensor monitors the output of each pump. An amber low pressure light illuminates when pump output pressure is low or when the pump switch is off. The center tank contains left and right fuel pumps, again powered by different AC buses. A pressure sensor monitors the output of each pump. An amber low pressure light illuminates when the pump output pressure is low and the pump switch is on. However, unlike the main tank pumps, the center tank pump low pressure lights are deactivated when the switches are off. The number one main tank pumps and the left center tank pump normally provide the fuel to the number one engine. The number two main tank pumps and the right center pump normally provide fuel to the number two engine. In review, the number one main tank pumps and the left center tank pump provide a positive fuel flow to the left engine. The number two main tank pumps and the right center tank pump provide a positive fuel flow to the right engine. Check valves in the fuel distribution system ensure a positive fuel flow from the tanks to the engines and prevent the transfer of fuel between tanks. The check valves in the center tank require less pressure to open than those in the main tanks. Therefore, with all fuel pumps operating, the center tank check valves open first and provide a back pressure on the main tank check valves. When the center tank is empty, the main tank pumps maintain the positive fuel flow to the engines. Note that the center tank check valves now prevent fuel from being pumped from the main tanks into the center tank. A fuel bypass valve and check valve are installed in each main tank. The bypass valves permit each engine to draw fuel from its respective tank if both fuel pumps in that tank are inoperative. 
Note that the center tank does not have a bypass valve. Fuel pumps must be operating to supply fuel from the center tank. Now let's discuss the fuel crossfeed system. A crossfeed valve allows fuel to feed to either or both engines from any tank. The valve open light indicates the position of the crossfeed valve. The valve is powered by the battery bus. The crossfeed selector opens and closes the crossfeed valve. When the selector is closed, the light is extinguished. When the valve is in transit, the valve open light illuminates bright blue. When the valve is open, the valve open light illuminates dim blue. The valve open light is also a disagreement light. It illuminates bright blue if the crossfeed selector position does not agree with the valve position. In this example, the crossfeed selector is closed and the fuel crossfeed valve has remained open. Now let's look at the engine fuel shutoff valves. Fuel shutoff valves are installed in the fuel line to each engine. The valves are powered by the hot battery bus and valve position is indicated by the fuel valve closed lights. The engine fuel shutoff valve is controlled by the engine start lever or the engine fire switch. The fuel valve closed lights are controlled by the position of the fuel shutoff valves. When the valve is open, the light is extinguished. When the valve is in transit, the light illuminates bright blue. When the valve is closed, the light illuminates dim blue. Now let's look at fuel for the APU. The APU receives fuel from the left side of the fuel system or without fuel pump operation by means of suction feed from the number one main tank. For extended ground operation, the left center fuel pump switch is normally positioned to on. This avoids fuel use from the number one tank and prevents a fuel imbalance. Answer A is correct. With both fuel pumps inoperative, the number one engine draws fuel through the bypass valve. Now let's look at the normal operations of the fuel system. Before engine start, verify the fuel valve closed lights are illuminated dim blue and the filter bypass lights are extinguished. Next, check the crossfeed selector closed and valve open light extinguished. Finally, place all fuel pump switches on for tanks containing fuel. Verify the low pressure lights extinguish, indicating the pump output pressure is normal. When the center tank becomes empty, the center tank low pressure lights both master caution lights and the fuel enunciator light illuminate. Placing the center tank fuel pump switches off turns off the pumps and the low pressure lights extinguish. The master caution and fuel enunciator lights also extinguish. Now let's consider a main tank fuel imbalance. When a difference in the quantity of fuel in the main tanks is observed, it should be recognized as a fuel imbalance condition. First, position the crossfeed selector open. Observe the valve open light illuminates bright, then dim blue. Next, position the fuel pump switches for the low tank off and observe that the low pressure lights illuminate. Now, the number two main tank is providing fuel to both engines. Monitor the fuel tank quantity indicators until the tank quantities are balanced. 
Next, position the fuel pump switches to on. Observe that the low pressure lights extinguish. Position the crossfeed valve selector to close and observe that the valve open light illuminates bright blue, then extinguishes. This returns the fuel system to normal operation. When fuel temperature approaches the fuel tank freeze point limit, descend, divert to warmer air, or increase Mach number. This should increase the fuel temperature. To test the fuel quantity indicators, press and hold the fuel quantity test switch until the fuel quantity indicators drive to zero and the error code 4 is displayed. Releasing the test switch initiates a self-test. The fuel quantity indicators display the following. All segments for two seconds. Blank for two seconds. Stored error codes, if any, for two seconds each. Full tank quantity for two seconds. Actual fuel quantity. Answer C is correct. For extended ground operation, turn on the left center fuel pump switch to prevent main tank fuel imbalance. Now, a look at fuel servicing. The fuel servicing panels are located on the right wing outboard of the engine. They are the external fueling panel and the manual defueling valve panel. Opening the fuel servicing panel access door activates a switch that provides power to operate the fueling station. Power sources may be the APU, ground power, or the battery. The fueling station panel contains the indicators and controls used to fuel the airplane or to transfer fuel between tanks. The open-close position of the electrically operated tank fueling valves is controlled by the two-position toggle switches in the center of the panel. A valve position light for each fueling valve illuminates blue when the valve is open. Each fuel quantity indicator displays the amount of fuel in its respective tank. The power control and test switch has three positions, test gauges, off, and aux fueling power control. The switch is spring-loaded from the test gauges position to off. Holding the switch to the test gauges position tests the operation of the fuel quantity indicators. The test is similar to the cockpit check. The aux fueling power control switch position provides an alternate power source to the fueling panel in the event the door operated fueling power control switch fails. A fueling manifold connects the single point fueling station with the fueling lines to each of the three fuel tanks. The quantity of fuel delivered to each tank from the fueling manifold is controlled by a tank fueling valve. When the tank is full, fueling will automatically be shut off. When filling the tanks to a predetermined level less than full, the fuel quantity indicators and fueling valve control switches are used to control the desired fuel quantity. When a pressure fueling facility is not available, Overwing gravity fueling is used to fuel tanks 1 and 2. A fueling port is provided on the upper surface of each wing for this purpose. There is no provision for gravity fueling of the center tank. When required, the center tank can be fueled by transferring fuel from tanks 1 and 2. Fuel can be transferred between fuel tanks while the airplane is on the ground. The fuel to be transferred is pumped into the fueling manifold. To accomplish this, the manual defueling valve must be open, the fueling hose must not be connected, and the main tank fuel pumps must be on. The tank fuel valves control distribution of the fuel in the fueling manifold. 
In this example, fuel is being transferred from tanks 1 and 2 to the center tank. Note that the cross-feed valve is open to prevent fuel imbalance. The quantity of fuel in each main tank can be measured manually using float sticks. Five are located in the lower surface of each wing. The graduations on each float stick are red after gradually withdrawing the flexible float stick from the tank until the scale sticks or hangs up. Fuel quantity is determined by using the fuel quantity data for ground attitudes document with the float stick readings and airplane attitude data. There is no manual method of measuring the quantity of fuel in the center tank. B is correct. The flow of fuel into each tank is determined by the position of the respective fueling valve. This completes the fuel system presentation.